In this video, we're going to look at applications of exponential growth and decay, but from a finance perspective. We're going to look at investments and compound interest. So, how long will it take for money in account that accrues interest at a rate of 4% compounded continuously to double? First off, everything in this video is going to be about compounding continuously. If you have a situation where you're compounded quarterly or monthly, this is not the video for you. But we're going to start with this problem. Anytime it's compounding uh, continuously, here's our formula. And the first thing we'll do is I want to relate it back to what we already learned. Okay, What we learned in a previous video when we are talking about like bacteria and, and population growth is we used this equation. We said that our value at any point is equal to the initial value times e to the kt. I want you to recognize that this is really the same equation. Okay, That our amount is equal to the principal, which is the initial value, the initial amount of money we invested, times e to the rt. So instead of y not for initial value, we're using p for principal. Instead of k for our constant of growth, we're using r. But either way, that's going to be our r. That's our percentage growth. That's our rate. And then t is still time. So I just want you to recognize that this is not a new formula. It's our same one, just with some different variables. Now, that being said, let's see if we can solve this problem. It says, how long will it take for money in account that accrues interest at a rate of 4% compounded continuously to double? So... So first off is we are trying to find how long it will take. So we're going to solve for t. That will be our variable at the end of this. Um, but they give us our rate. Our rate is 4%, which I'm going to substitute it in right there as 0 0.04. We we'll always use the decimal form of that rate. okay? And then p, here's the hard part. We don't really know how much was initially invested, and we don't know how much we ended up with. I mean, for example, um, just to kind of give you some insight, it could have been... Um, that we started with $5 and it became $10, right? Um, it could have been that we started with $1 and it became $2, or, I mean, these could be huge numbers. We could have started with 1000 and ended up with 2000 right? But what we can do here is your first step is going to be divide each side by whatever values right here to solve. So you could even just say, um, let's say I have some principal amount. I want to know how long it takes to get to twice that amount. It doesn't matter which of those, out of all those forms I just showed you for setting up and solving it, they'd all give you the same answer. Because what you're going to do is you're going to start by dividing both sides by whatever that coefficient is. If it's 1, if it's 2, if it's 1,000, you're going to divide by it. And then you're going to be left with 2 equals e to the 0.04 times t. No matter what, you should be at this on your next step. So now to solve it, we're going to take the natural log of each side. And that allows us to take this and rewrite it as a coefficient using our properties of logs. So we have that the natural log of 2 equals 0.04t times the natural log of e, which are inverses, so they undo each other. So the natural log of 2 equals 0.04 times t. And then we're just going to divide by that 0.04 on each side to isolate the t. Now once I do my calculator button pushes... I get that t equals 17.32, or I guess I should round that to how about 33, and we're in terms of years, right? Um, it doesn't really say, but let's, we always assume our time is in terms of years on these type of problems. So that's how long it takes. So and I want to re-emphasize the amount of time it takes it to go from $1 to 2 is the same as it would take to go from 1,000 to 2,000. The amount it takes to double does not depend on the initial principal investment. So no matter what we use for P, we would have this right here. Let's do another example. So how long would it take an investment to quadruple if it's compounded continuously at 7%? So we have this equation. And so what we know is if I have some principal, our rate is 7 now. We're still trying to solve for t, but I don't want to know when it doubles. I want to know when it quadruples. In other words, 4p. So let's just solve this equation. I'm going to divide by p on each side, which is going to leave us with 4 equals e to the 0.07t. And then I'm going to take the natural log of each side. In doing that, that allows me to take this exponent and write it as a coefficient. So we have the natural log of 4 equals... 0.07 times t times the natural log of e, which are inverses. 
So we have the natural log of 4 equals 0.07 times t. I'm just going to divide by that 0.07 on each side. So let's do some calculator button pushes and get our answer. And I think that what we'd find in this case is that our time is going to be roughly 19.804, and we are in terms of years. So hopefully you see how to do this structure of problem. That's kind of the same as the previous problem. Let's do one last one, and then we'll be done. How long will it take an investment of 1,000 to be valued at 1,500 if it's compounded continuously at 4.9%? Well, let's write our, our, out our equation first. And what we want to know is we have an initial value of 1,000, and we don't know how long it takes to get to 1,500, but we have the rate. The rate is 4.9. You've got to be careful. Don't write 4.9 here. What we've got to be careful about is we're going to use the decimal form of that, which is actually 0 0.049. I've got to move that decimal over two places. So at this rate, how long will it take 1,000 to become 1,500? So let's solve. I'm going to divide by 1,000 on each side first. Then I'm going to take the natural log of each side. I feel like a broken record because we're doing the same thing in each problem. Actually, from here, actually, I'll show all the steps. I don't want to skip the steps. That can become a coefficient. So we have the natural log of 1.5 equals 0.049t times the natural log of e, which are inverses. And so I have the natural log of 1.5 equals 0.049t. And then lastly, I'm going to divide by 0.049 on each side. And then to get our final t value, I just got to do those calculator button pushes right there. And it looks like the amount of time that takes is going to be roughly 8.275 years. Okay, S several problems, all the same structure, um, should be pretty straightforward.